Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about my top 10 list for free applications that are alternatives to mainstream products. So these are primarily computer-based applications, except for one mobile app. And each application kind of serves its own role, so there's not really any overlapping here. So application number 10, the best free video recording software. That is OBS by a long shot. So OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software, and it's many people's tool of choice for recording and streaming all sorts of video content. Now, frequently that could mean YouTubers, but really you can use OBS for anyone who wants to record videos and save it to their computer. So OBS allows you to set up scenes with cameras, computer screencast windows, or game applications, overlay images on top of your video such as a logo or a watermark and it's easy to set up that and more in a single OBS scene. So one big advantage to OBS is that there is built-in integration with Twitch and YouTube. So if you want to stream to Twitch TV you can have it show chat windows from your channel as well as controls for changing the title and description of your stream while you're recording in OBS and you don't have to have a web browser open. And then when you're recording in OBS, it's easy to bring it into a video editor because OBS supports important video formats like MP4, .move, and to a lesser extent .flv. And there's many different settings you can use to customize your recording or stream to your liking. So if you want to record in 30 or 60 FPS, it's easy to switch between the two, set whatever video resolution you want. It's easy to do that kind of stuff. So a paid version of this would be something like XSplit Broadcaster. But there's not many good free alternatives, and in most cases you get more of a shareware type deal where it's free to download, but then it prompts you to purchase anything. Never happens with OBS. And I think one of the things that points out just how good OBS is, is that the top YouTuber, or at least the top solo YouTuber, PewDiePie, uses it to record his videos. As does myself and many other people. So top 10 free application number 9, best modeling and 3D effects program that you can get for free is Blender. So this is a cross-platform modeling and animation program that you can use to create things like 3D effects. So the fact that Blender is free is actually amazing because if you try to get a professional license for a 3D modeling program such as Maya or 3ds Max, well, those programs are very good. They tend to be incredibly expensive. So you probably wonder if Blender stacks up well against those paid applications. And as far as I know, in most cases, industry standards still tends to use the paid stuff. But there are people you can find who do create professional quality works when it comes to 3D modeling and animation in Blender. It's not the easiest program to learn, as is any animation program, but the tools for creating models, environments, animations are pretty much complete inside of the program. And of course, the app is extendable as well. People do create plugins for it. Probably one of the best showcase channels for what you can actually do in Blender it would be Yan Sculpts. So you can find this channel on YouTube. He's been blowing up over the last couple of years. Uh, he's up to 100K subscribers, and basically he does speed sculpt videos. And what he is able to create in a couple hours of time using Blender is actually amazing, and I really like his work. So he's a channel that's definitely worth checking out, and that is only one aspect of what Blender is capable of doing. Once you actually learn about the program and and go through some tutorials. It's actually really powerful. Free application number eight, the best free computer fix up tool. So I would say this is kind of a cross up between Glary Utilities and CC Cleaner, but I'm going to go with Glary Utilities because the feature set is a bit more powerful for what you get for free. So Glary Utilities is a solid tool for cleaning up your PC and fixing registry issues. So there are a lot of little tools in Glary Utilities that can help you to maintain your PC. And one of the things that I like most about it over other applications is that you can have it run in an automated maintenance mode or go into the app and basically do a one-click maintenance to fix a lot of your computer's problems, such as checking the registry for errors. There's also a really good software updater tool inside of Glary Utilities where you can see all of the programs that exist on your computer and it will take you straight to a download website that basically keeps the latest versions of common applications such as GIMP. So application number seven, the best free language learning application. And I would say this has to be Duolingo. And this is a mobile application different from every other item in this list. But I think it's worth including in this top 10 list because years ago I went ahead and picked up a Rosetta Stone course for several hundred dollars. And it, that includes several levels of a language I was trying to learn. Um, but Duolingo basically gives you the same thing, arguably in some ways better for free which is quite amazing. 
The ability to just take out your phone, go through some quick lessons and questions, and learn some new concepts and words in just a few minutes is actually really handy. So in Duolingo, there are free courses in learning languages from many different source languages. So it's not just English on there. Uh, you could go from something like Spanish to many other languages. That said, of course, I believe on the application that English has the most languages you can learn from English as a source material. But there's a huge amount of languages you can go and play around with there. Many other possibilities other than the standard stuff you would learn in, say, an American high school, which would probably be Spanish, French, German, and Chinese. And there's actually a few limitations on what you can do with the free version of the application. The main thing is that you get hit with ads occasionally, because obviously apps need to make money too. And without paying, you either need to test out of the part of the course you're currently on, or you need to go in order. I think if you pay money, you can actually skip to wherever you want to go. Um, but aside from that, there's really nothing in the app that you're required to pay for. And even if you do upgrade to the pro version, I think it's only a few dollars a month. But anyway, if you have any interest in learning a language on your mobile phone, and that includes iOS, Android, and Windows phones, then I definitely recommend checking out Duolingo and the App Store relevant to you. So uh, next up, number six, best lightweight audio editor for free. I would say that's Audacity. Audacity is an excellent tool for free audio editing. It has an easy to use timeline that allows multiple audio tracks, of course, with many good effects and filters that you can easily slap on top of your recordings. You can also record audio inside of the application and export to many different formats. So if you are trying to record voiceovers and you don't use a different tool for it, such as the built in recording and DaVinci Resolve for making videos, or if you want to record some sound effects, with an external microphone, then Audacity is a really good tool for doing that. It's also a cross-platform, so you can get it on Linux, I believe, Mac OS as well, and Windows, of course. As far as making music, though, I'm not 100% sure how it would fare compared to other tools like FL Studio, so I couldn't go as far to say if I would recommend it for that. But if you're just doing simple, lightweight audio editing, then go ahead and try Audacity out. It's a great tool. Top five free apps, number five, LibreOffice as the best free office suite, hands down. So if you need Microsoft Office, but you don't want to pay for the license or the updates every few years as you upgrade to a newer version of Microsoft uh, Office, whether that's like 2013, 2016, or I think they have 2019 now as well, then LibreOffice becomes your best real alternative to Microsoft Office. I would say that I haven't even seen a paid application aside from Microsoft Office that I would say is better than LibreOffice. And I have tried a couple other Office suites that are lesser known. And one of the things that really points out to how good LibreOffice is, is that it is pretty much installed on default on almost every single Linux distribution. So that's Linux operating system for computers. Uh, doesn't have Microsoft Office available on that because Linux uses pretty much free applications. So then out of the box, they just kind of say, oh, we're probably going to need this tool because almost everybody needs to open a word processor at some point, right? So more or less all of the functions that you would expect on Microsoft Word are also available on LibreOffice in their own form. And the apps are quite similar. So you would have a writing app that would be LibreOffice Writer, a spreadsheet app, which is LibreOffice Calc as opposed to Excel, a presentation app as the alternative to Microsoft PowerPoint, and the ability to do things like include charts, spreadsheets, and images on any document you're working on. So pretty much any office or school task that you would need to work on and complete, you can do that with LibreOffice Writer. So if you want a free alternative from home, it's definitely going to hold its ground very easily. So application number four, which is the top free vector editor, is Inkscape pretty easily. There's not many programs that really serve as a free alternative to Adobe Illustrator, but if you were looking to create vector art, then Inkscape is the choice to do that. So what we're talking about when we're talking about vector art is images or paintings that can be scaled up to any size you want without losing any of the detail. So normally if you paint in another program like GIMP or Photoshop where it is not vector art, but rather drawing pixels on the screen and you try to double the size of that, like go from say 180p resolution and then you scale it up to 4K in an image editor, then the 4K image is not going to look as good as the 180p image. 
because when you scale up those normal images like a JPEG or a PNG, the image becomes blurry and it doesn't look good at all. But if you create your art using a vector program like Inkscape, then you can double the size, quadruple the size, or make it 10 times as big, however big you want, and it will look exactly the same. So this is really useful when you need to create artwork or designs for many different sizes. So for instance, if you were going to create something and it was going to be printed out as a sticker, but you wanted it to just as easily be able to be, um, I don't know, painted on the side of a building, then vector-based art becomes a really great choice for that. Also, just to point out, if you've played a lot of mobile games, then you've probably seen a bunch of vector art. Typically, vector art tends to be a little bit more simplistic along the lines of logos rather than a really detailed painting. Um, so if you've ever seen like really cartoony graphics on a mobile game, then there's a good chance that that was created using Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape. So if you wanted Illustrator without really having to pay anything for it, then Inkscape becomes the choice for you. So app number three, the best free VPN. So I'm going with Windscribe for this one. There are an awful lot of free VPNs out there, but I found Windscribe to be really easy to use and really generous with its free data. So Windscribe is a VPN, and you've probably already heard on some YouTube video or ad that a VPN is a virtual private network. And what a VPN essentially does is it hides your IP address from other computers on the internet by putting a server between you and them as the middleman. So whenever another computer tries to look at where your traffic is coming from, they see the location of the server that you're connected to and not your real location in the world. So the general idea of having a VPN is that it helps with your privacy by removing some of the information that websites or individuals would be able to have access to regarding you and your use of your computer. And also it can be helpful in doing things like unblocking region locked websites. So for instance, there are some companies that have online stores that will block you based on your IP if your IP address happens to show that you're from a different location in the world. And by changing your visible location to a server that's in a allowed area, such as the United States, then it can help you get back on those websites for completely legitimate purposes. So anyway, one of the big advantages of Windscribe specifically is that it offers 15 gigabytes of data per month for free while you're connected to the VPN, as long as you sign up for their emailing list. So you don't have to pay anything and you can transfer 15 gigabytes of data while you're connected to the VPN. So as long as you're not trying to watch a ton of videos behind a VPN or you're trying to do huge downloads behind a VPN, that's actually more than enough data for general use. So if you're just browsing the internet, you'll be good to go. Also, they provide applications that you can install on Windows and your mobile phones. I'm not 100% sure if they have one for Linux, but I think they might, uh, where you can basically connect to it just by clicking a toggle button and then you'll be connected to a VPN at your default server or whichever one you happen to choose. Also, I found that the connection on Windscribe tends to be pretty stable as well. So it's a good choice to check out if you have any interest in VPNs. So number two, the top free non-vector image editor, which is GIMP, otherwise known as the GNU image manipulation program, which allows you to create and modify images or photos in whatever way you wish. So if that sounds like Photoshop, it should, because essentially you're talking about the same kind of tool. Using GIMP, you can use many different tools to adjust, add to, or remove parts from your images working inside of a layer-based system. So with layers, you're able to bring in multiple images that are separate from each other. And when you apply something to one layer, it only affects that layer, allowing you to separate the different parts of the graphic you're working on and it also allows you to undo certain parts or remove parts from your document really easily. So me personally, I frequently use GIMP for creating thumbnails and other graphics for my videos, but it's also a really good tool for adjusting colors and photos or adding special filter effects. So if you want to manipulate photos to have a different look, if you want to create a custom image, having a lot of different tools to work with far above what you'd have in something like Microsoft Paint, then GIMP is going to be the way to go if you're looking for a free application that can do those things. And if you need a bunch more special effects filters, then what I would recommend you check out is a extension called Gimmick, that's G apostrophe M-I-C, 
as it's basically a library that is compatible with GIMP as well as several other programs, where it can add over 500 special effects that you can use to further modify your GIMP images or photos. And if you want to learn GIMP actively, then check out my channel because I have a lot of GIMP tutorials on it as well that you can use to help you get started. So my top free application in 2019, which is the top video editor, anyone who subscribes to my channel probably already knows where I'm going with this, is hands down DaVinci Resolve. So when I think of a free video editor, I usually think of really ugly apps with an unusable and slow interface with limited capacity to edit and create special effects. So I don't want to be too mean to the other free video editors out there, but there aren't many good ones. But DaVinci Resolve's free version has changed that perception for me because of the quality and depth of the application. It's much closer to something like Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas Pro. And in DaVinci Resolve, you can create complex node setups to generate 3D special effects, titles, and particle physics. So just really quickly, if you don't know what nodes are, the general idea of nodes are that they are little components that tie into other components to generate complex special effects. So that might be something like including a 3D text element with a box that surrounds that 3D text, merging those together and then rendering. That would be four nodes to create one special effect. And you can go much more complicated than that in DaVinci Resolve as well. But aside from that, Editing is very smooth as DaVinci Resolve has a great trim tool for adjusting the boundaries between your clips. It's fast to edit and make things look good. And there's also an entire tab dedicated to audio editing and recording called Fairlight, where you can include out of the box effects like noise reduction or a compressor. And you can also install third party VST plugins for audio such as Reaper. And this is on the free version. The free version of DaVinci Resolve is very powerful and you would only likely run into any of the limitations with the application, which honestly there's not that many. Most of the functions are completely allowed in the free version without upgrading. But the limitations of the free version that are in the application would probably only apply to you if you were trying to do professional film quality video editing, in which case there's a pro version upgrade. I think it costs around $300, which in the scope of professional grade video editors is actually a pretty reasonable price. But yeah, once again, if you're just doing standard YouTube videos, then in most cases DaVinci Resolve is a really, really great tool. I challenge you to find a better free video editor. And if you do, let me know because I'd love to check it out. And of course, while I'm talking about how great DaVinci Resolve is on my channel, I have a lot of free tutorials for the latest version, which is currently 15 that you can check out as well. So that's pretty much my top 10 list for the best free applications that you can have installed on your devices for 2019. Each one of them has a different purpose, but if you have any interest in doing those things such as editing photos, editing audio, or simply writing a word processor document, then I recommend you check out all those applications I mentioned. I will have links to each of them in the description. So thanks for watching. I've been Chris and I will see you guys in my future video content.